health, harmony, and happiness with Kathy. I'm your host, Kathy Stricker. In my personal life, I am a wife to a dedicated law enforcement officer and mama to three lively littles. I'm an adamantine yoga teacher, health coach, community betterment advocate, and wellness enthusiast. But what I really like doing is connecting others with tools and resources that bring about health, harmony, and happiness. Whatever this looks like to you, I'm here to offer my own insights and tools from others that allow you to realize your full potential to live mindfully as your authentic best self. Allow me to be a guide in discovering what works for you. Hey friends, thanks for listening and being here today. I'm so grateful for all of you who are listening and enjoying the podcast. I'm really having a lot of fun with it. I need your voice though in helping spread the word about this health, harmony, and happiness movement. So when you get a chance, if you haven't already, Would you be so kind as to leave me a rating or a review in Apple Podcasts? That's how others find this podcast more easily and how we can get the word out to more people. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoy today's show. So if you're listening to this podcast, you've probably already discovered that I sometimes do things a little bit differently and that I'm also a Christian and I have a deep belief in God and Jesus. That being said, I'd like to ask you to listen to this episode with an open mind. There are parts in it that you may not agree with, and perhaps things that I'm going to tell you that are outside of your belief system. Now, I'll admit, when I first learned about some of these things that I'm going to tell you about, I questioned them big time. Um, And I questioned how they fit in with Christianity. But I received some very wise counsel from my pastor telling me that if God made all things and something is being used for someone's good and for their benefit, then wouldn't he have created that too? We don't know how the universe actually works, but I do know that it is expansive and that God is far bigger than us or any problem that we've ever encountered. So who are we to say what is or what isn't? I'm just asking you to be open. I'm going to get a little bit personal today and let you in on some of the details of the journey I took to help my youngest, Lulu, who is just about eight weeks now, arrive into this world. I had a VBAC, which for those of you who don't know, is a vaginal birth after cesarean. And... These are not very common. In fact, they're definitely not the norm in our society. But if you hadn't noticed, I usually tend to deviate from the norm just a bit. And I did so even more because I had my VBAC after two C-sections, which definitely is not very common because there is risk involved with it. But I believe that each child enters this world how they were meant to. And I'm happy that I was able to experience both ways of birthing my babies because now I more fully understand that they arrived how they needed to. My experiences that helped make the VBAC possible taught me a lot, and I'm so grateful for being able to discover more about myself throughout the process. Now, if you recall, I credit my yoga practice to helping me relax enough to conceive my first child. So it was a lifestyle change that I committed to. And it certainly helped bring Huck into this world, my firstborn. But what was stopping me from bringing a child into this world as God created my body to do? I really had a hard time believing what the doctor had told me after I had Huck, that my pelvis was just too small. But when it came to my second pregnancy, I decided that I didn't even want to pursue a trial of labor after a cesarean or a TOLAC because I didn't want to travel 45 minutes for care. And there was this element of fear inside of me because I just didn't want to go to the work of finding a doctor in another city. And so I opted for the only option that I had with my own doctor, and that was another C-section. And when we discovered I was pregnant with our third, I initially researched if anyone in the Des Moines area did VBACs after two C-sections, but I was told that the only place in Iowa that performed them was Iowa City. And since I definitely didn't want to drive to Des Moines for my second pregnancy to pursue a VBAC, I 
was not going to drive to Iowa City at all because that's um, an hour and 45 minutes away from us to do or to attempt a VBAC for this pregnancy. But about halfway through my pregnancy, something told me to research what it would take to go to Iowa City for a trial of labor. And my local doctor this time was also on board and supportive of me trying this approach, doing a share care with the midwives or doctors at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. So I decided it was time to start doing deeper work on myself to prepare if I really wanted to make this happen. Shortly after we decided to go for a trial of labor, I was in seated meditation at the end of my yoga practice, and I had this very clear vision appear of a baby being held in wings and being lifted up towards the sky. Now, this kind of disturbed me because it wasn't just any baby. It looked very much like one of my babies, but I didn't really dwell on it. I thought it was strange, but um, had no idea what it could possibly mean or why I received that vision. And an hour or so later, that very same morning, Michelle, my energy healer, was doing some hypnotherapy with me with the intent of helping me clear any energy or blockages that were no longer serving me to help me prepare for the VBAC. And what she told me at the end of my session was that it was brought to her attention that there was a blockage in my root and sacral chakras related to past life experience. Okay, remember how I asked you at the beginning of this session to keep an open mind? I'm going to remind you again to just be open. Let me preface what I say next with the fact that Michelle didn't know what I had seen in my meditation earlier that morning, nor did she know what Huck, my first child's birth, was like. But she proceeded to tell me that the blockage that was there was because of a stillbirth baby that my spirit had delivered in a past life. And that stillbirth baby's spirit is the spirit that is now Huck, which is why when I actually delivered him, he was not wanting to come out. He was holding the fear of the past stillbirth that was his spirit or that was what his spirit had experienced and not wanting to go through it again. Whoa, hold on. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that I've lost my marbles if I really believe this stuff. And if I do believe it, how can I still be a Christian? Well, as I said earlier, keep an open mind. Yes, I do believe this. And remember what I also said about God creating everything? I don't know how all the past life stuff works, but I know that there must be something there. It was definitely deep and hard to believe information that she was sharing with me, but it also made sense to me, knowing who my five-year-old is as a person now in life and who he has been since he was born and how much encouragement it takes him to begin new things. There are some deep fear beliefs inside of that kid that I know have been present since he was born. I could actually hear it in his cry when he was a newborn in the hospital and they would be bringing bringing him to me from the nursery in the middle of the night. I, I heard that fear and that anxiety. Now, I hadn't told Michelle anything about how I had labored for 20 hours with Huck and then pushed for two and that he just wasn't progressing any when I was pushing and that was the reason that I ended up with a C-section. There was no distress or anything. It was just that the doctor felt it was time for some other sort of intervention. And ever since he was born, I have commented that it was like he just didn't want to come out. So the vision that I'd had that morning now completely made sense to me. I've never really given much serious thought to past lives before this experience. I just kind of believed it was something people referred to but didn't really mean or that people who did believe in them were just kind of far out there. So believe what you will, but I can, can't be certain that there isn't some spiritual connection or path that is bigger and far more expansive than just our short physical time here on earth. Who are we to say it's not possible? After that experience, I felt a sense of confidence that it was indeed going to be possible for me to have a VBAC. 
but I knew I still had to ensure that my mind was in the right place. So I dug in. I continued to practice yoga, talk to God, use meditation and visualizations, and listen to hypnobirthing tracks right up to my delivery day and during labor. And it got to the point that I knew I had done everything I possibly could do to prepare for the birth and just had to trust that when the time came, I would be able to pull those nuggets of information and nuggets of things that I had been practicing and use them in labor and delivery. And sure enough, it worked. I am certain that is what helped me have a natural delivery with absolutely no medication and just 11 minutes of pushing. It was truly a life-altering experience. The sense of empowerment and accomplishment that is still present in me after having done such a thing is unexplainable. As any woman who delivers a baby should feel this way, there was just something different about this delivery than my other two. Things just haven't been worrying me as much since I delivered Lulu, which is a welcome relief, and I have a whole different outlook on life, and it is absolutely beautiful. So after I had Lulu, the most common question that I got from people, mainly women, was how was your recovery in comparison to your other kids? I didn't keep it a secret that we were doing a TOLAC, so when I had her, naturally there was interest. I guess I hadn't given much thought to how the recovery was going to go because I was used to recovering after major abdominal surgery when I had babies. But to be honest, they were all different. Each recovery had things that were easier than others, as well as things that were not so great. With each delivery, I was also a couple years older than with the subsequent delivery, not to mention that in the medical world, I am advanced maternal age. Haha, <laughs> yep. Probably doesn't seem like it, um, but they don't take into consideration your physical health level or, or fitness level at all. Um, once you hit 35, you are old in the medical world for delivering babies. So it's really comparing apples to oranges as far as how my deliveries and the recovery from the deliveries went. But if I had to decide, vaginal delivery recovery was probably a bit easier for me, as I'm sure much of the world will agree when it comes down to it. Whether it's a C-section or a vaginal delivery, you are drastically changing your body and bringing a new human being into this world, which is pretty amazing. So life changes and it's beautiful. Now, why am I telling you all of these intimate details of my experience? Because I want women to know they have a choice if they've had a C-section that wasn't really what they went into labor and delivery expecting. I want to educate. It is an option. We happen to live in a rural area where a trial of labor after one C-section is not very common because of the risk involved and the liability it places on hospitals. So to do one after two C-sections is pretty rare these days. And yes, it can be more risky, especially depending on how and why the two previous births were cesarean. I get that. But I also think we live in a society that pushes surgery for things, including delivering babies, because there is more control over it. It can be more predictable. And let's face it. Hospitals make a whole lot more money for surgical procedures than they do for birthing a baby the way that God made a woman's body to birth babies. Folks, I get that. I get it partially. I like predictability and I like schedules, remember? But when it comes to birthing babies, it's not always the best option to surgically remove the baby. Yes, sometimes it is and it is necessary. And I'm no expert in this field, but I know that a woman's intuition is sometimes stronger than what a male doctor may tell you or what a female doctor may tell you. If you know that your body has the ability to do something, trust your gut, trust that sense. Not everyone is the right candidate for a trial of labor, but if you think you might be, then pursue it. It is so worth it. Here's a little statistic for you. Did you know that nearly one in three women deliver by cesarean in the U.S.? And that's not because it's medically necessary in all these instances. If baby and or mama are not in distress, a C-section is not necessary. 
if the doctor just wants to get on with things and rush the process of bringing the baby into the world so he can get back to working his daily schedule, a C-section is not necessary. Active pushing can take up to four hours on average, especially for first-time moms. Yet most hospitals only allow it to go on for an average of two hours before they decide to intervene, even if there is no distress to the baby or mama. So educate yourself or pass this information on to another mama who may benefit. I delivered with a midwife because that was my choice, but there are doctors that do this as well. I definitely do not recommend a home birth for a VBAC because of the increased risk involved. But at a hospital that supports this practice and under the supervision of a medical team that is experienced in this practice and ready in the event that something does go wrong, then yes, explore your options because it truly is life-changing if you haven't experienced birthing a baby this way. It did take extra effort to prepare mentally and physically to deliver vaginally, and I didn't intend on not using any pain medication, but I can only believe that the work that I did before made a natural delivery possible, and really not that bad from what I can remember since I'm now on this side of the delivery holding a sweet little baby. It was intense, but so, so worth it. My outlook on life is just a bit different now, and I feel a sense of power and strength that I didn't even know that I had. And certainly, my faith and trust in Jesus is just a bit greater. But isn't that why he takes us to our limits? I believe it is. That's it for this time. Thanks for letting me share my experience with you. And thanks for helping make this podcast possible by listening to it. Consider sharing this episode with just one other person. And remember, if you haven't left a rating or review, I'd love it if you could take just a few minutes to do so in Apple Podcasts. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you hear, help us grow this podcast by sharing it with even just one other person. And it would mean so much to me if you would take a moment of your time to write a review. Your comments and feedback are what help me continue to bring you topics and guests that can help you and others on their journey in creating health, harmony, and happiness. Remember to head on over to cairnyogawellness.com to get the show notes and links from today's episode. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Cairn Yoga Wellness. And to continue connecting with more resources that could help you enhance health, harmony, and happiness in your own life, subscribe to this podcast. Thanks again for listening.